As of this moment, the report of the President's Commission is public record. Fifteen seconds the after the Warren Commission report went hand. public, CBS First News anchor Walter Cronkite summed it up. Who killed John F. Kennedy? The Commission answers unequivocally, Lee Harvey Oswald. Was Oswald acting alone, or was he a member of a conspiracy? The Commission answers, he acted alone. But even from the day the president was shot, most Americans had their doubts. In a 1963 Gallup poll taken the week of the assassination, when asked if some group or element was also responsible for the killing, more than half of U.S. adults said yes. In the absence of official information, rumors took root. The most common were that the mob was behind it, or the CIA, or Fidel Castro. Just this year, former New York Times reporter Philip Sheenan revealed that the Warren Commission went so far as to send a man to question Castro face to face. In a clandestine meeting on a boat off the Cuban coast, Castro denied any part in the assassination. Still, the conspiracy theories piled up. Oswald, with his cheap little rifle, couldn't have done it alone. We did. An unending parade of investigators and news outlets, not the least of which was CBS News, spent years and whatever money it took to find evidence, any evidence, that the official story wasn't the whole story. Did Lee Harvey Oswald shoot President Kennedy? CBS News concludes that he did. In the 1970s, the House Select Committee on Assassinations confirmed Oswald's involvement, but left the door open for the possibility of another gunman. Secret Service men all around. The conspiracy theory has been kept alive by other revelations over the years, like a reported plot to kill Kennedy in Chicago three weeks before Dallas. But few things fueled Americans' belief in a conspiracy more than this. Once you conclude, the magic bullet could not create all seven of those wounds. In his 1991 film, JFK, director Oliver Stone made what might be the best known case against the Warren Commission report. And by definition, there had to be a conspiracy. 22 years later, Stone is still convinced he's right. Governments lie. And everything we've learned since 1991 when the film came out has reinforced the notion that the governments have not been straight with us. Do you see conspiracies in everything? No, not in everything. We have conspiracies, but we also have actions that happen randomly, and accidents do happen. Could it just be that we can't wrap our minds around the idea that the most powerful man in the world could be taken out by a nobody? But I can wrap my mind around that, sure. McKinley was taken out by an anarchist. Lincoln was taken out by, you know, he was taken out by a conspiracy, but John Wilkes Booth was a totally emotional man. Assassinations are often done by loners. But not but in this case. I don't believe case. so in this case because of all the evidence around Dealey Plaza that day and the autopsy and the gun and the bullet and the thousand little reasons that I'm trying to tell you too. And Stone didn't stop with his JFK movie. His 12-hour documentary series, The Untold History of the United States, which aired on the CBS-owned cable network Showtime, fills in the gaps, as he sees them, in the rest of the 20th century. Dwight Eisenhower put the world on a glide path towards annihilation with the most gargantuan expansion of military power in history. But Stone says we'll likely never have definitive proof of what happened in Dallas. You don't think we will ever know? I don't think it's going to be a smoking gun like you think it is, but I do think if you go to the negatives and you add them up, your logic will lead you, like Sherlock Holmes said, to a deduction. And that deduction is that he was removed. By more than one man? Yes. One, yes, by more than one man. He was removed by, by our government. Not the entire government, I'm sorry. By a certain elements in the CIA, I believe, control this operation. They're very good at this game. Range is hot. Today, hot. questions about single bullets and lone assassins are still being asked. But the answers are, in essence, always the same. You essentially put Lee Harvey Oswald on trial. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, you, and you won. You convicted him. Yeah. Former Los Angeles County prosecutor Vincent Bugliosi knows a thing or two about evidence. He put Charles Manson behind bars. Is this what you expected? Yes, definitely. More recently, he wrote a 1,500-page analysis of the Warren report and walked away convinced the commission got it right. So I'm not just satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt of Oswald's guilt. I'm satisfied beyond all doubt. It's not even an open question. Beyond all doubt. Beyond all doubt. Even though Oswald said he was a patsy and never admitted to any of it. That doesn't mean anything, of course. If he had the immorality 
and the boldness to kill the President of the United States. Certainly he had the much lesser immorality to deny doing it. Why are you convinced there was no conspiracy? I told the jury once, I said, folks, I will stipulate that three people can keep a secret, but only if two are dead. And here, after 50 years, not one credible word of a conspiracy, not one syllable is leaked out. Why? Because there's nothing to leak out. It's all simple, unadulterated nonsense. And there are signs that more people are indeed wrapping their heads, if not their hearts, around the idea that Oswald did act alone. A recent CBS News poll shows a majority still believes others were involved, but that number is declining from 75 percent 20 years ago to 61 percent today. Here comes Oswald down the hall again. Now, as then, it was unfathomable. But I emphatically deny these charges. CBS News commentator Eric Severide might have said it best. What fed the conspiracy notion about the Kennedy assassination among many Americans was the sheer incongruity of the affair. All that power and majesty wiped out in an instant by one skinny, weak-chinned little character. It was like believing that the Queen Mary had sunk without a trace because of a log floating somewhere in the Atlantic. And that conspiracy notion may likely exist 50 years from now. Truth is, no amount of evidence can explain what has been to so many the unexplainable.